Well, hello, welcome back. I know there's already an instructable out there covering this, actually, but it's covering the 100, I believe up to 100 gallon for the 100 gallon Whisper, Whisper Tetra pump. Um, I went and purchased the 20 gallon, so it's, it's rated for 10 to 20 gallons Whisper Tetra pump to try to do a similar thing, but it, when I opened it, I realized it was slightly different than the actual instructable. I'm just here to do a quick video to show you that Despite the differences you may see, it's actually not all too that different. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. And we're going to test this. What we're going to do is we're going to reverse the vacuum on this pump. So instead of forcing air out into a carbon filter to release oxygen and air bubbles into a fish tank, we're going to make it pull air towards us and in so we can use a little suction tool such as this one that, that actually came with um with my current uh, SMD rework station, hot air rework station, but the difference being is it, it that, that has a really loud pump on it. And if you have anybody else that's sleeping in the house, possibly, I don't know, the room next to you that's complaining because you're up late at night doing soldering and you got this loud pump running next to your soldering iron or, well, built into your soldering iron because it rattles a little bit. Um, or maybe it's the location you have it, it's vibrating through the desk. I was looking for something quieter, so we went with the 20 gallon pump. Now, to speed things up, I've already pulled three of the screws out, and I have a Phillips bit, Phillip 1, size 1. We're going to pull out this last screw here. Here we go. Set that aside. Simply comes open. And this is what you have on the inside. The transformer releasing a magnetic pulse with another magnet here that operates the diaphragm, bounces up and down, and controls or causes the valve to open and shut a certain way, controlling the airflow. And what we're going to do, essentially, is actually turn this valve around. So instead of putting air out, we're going to suck the air in to use to pick up little SMD components and parts. So to do this, Set that aside. I'm going to change out my fillet bit for a flat head. This did have a little bit of glue on top. It broke off real easy. And we're going to re-glue that just in case. I'm sure that was there for a reason. My guess is to stop the rubber dot, the rubber insert from coming out. And right here next to the rubber insert now, on, on the instructable it says just simply lift out. I've tried the simply lift out with the smaller pump, it doesn't work. Um, I've tried the simply grab with a pair of needle nose pliers, and well, it doesn't work either. Uh, it just mars up the plastic actually a little bit. So what I did is I put the fillip in this little hole here. There's a little gap in the metal, and I lift it this rubber piece so the glue broke a little bit. So that way, once the glue breaks, you only have to lift it a little bit, you're good. And then I took the, the rubber diaphragm there off and pulled it out like so. Set that aside. Now we have much more room to grab this and lift out. Be careful when you do this, there are two small O-rings in here, and pay attention to which way your diaphragm currently sits. In my case, this one has the bigger O-ring towards the exit, where the air exits, and the smaller one towards the power mains cord. Um, and at this point, it's really just a simple task of reversing, or flipping this over, and reinserting it. Now you can see right here, I've already caught the O-ring. And this is something you have to be careful about um, because the o-ring will get bunched up if you don't have it pressed in all the way and it doesn't insert quite correctly it will bunch the o-ring up now i noticed it, it did this when i was doing a test run on this so here i have some uh synthetic grease with ptfe um, m well the ptfe is mostly used for high temperature uh, the reason i have this is for 3d printing of course being high temperature but it is a really good grease, so we're going to prevent this and actually help the vacuum a little bit better 
by giving it a better vacuum, all O-rings eventually dry out. That's just the nature of rubber sealed O-rings. But we're just going to slightly lubricate this O-ring and then put that back in. And we can give the little one, it didn't come out, but we'll give that a little bit of a lubrication on there too for a better seal as well. You know, or, or, you know what, we have the tweezers. Let's go ahead and pull that out and give that a lubrication on both sides and insert the small one back into its place as well. So while the valve is out, it is a lot easier, I found, if we put this back on first, then reinsert the valve in the reverse direction, inserting the little rubber garment here into the storage holder here. And then this is very important that this doesn't come up. If this comes up, it may actually change the, the flow or direction of the magnets uh, pulling back and forth. So to prevent that, since I actually broke the glue to do this, we're gonna plug in the hot glue gun and we're going to give it a couple of drops of hot glue right there. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and put the fly head back. We don't need this anymore. Go back to the fill up one bit that we had. And we'll demonstrate how good it works now. The current tubing I have is not the same diameter as the diameter here for fish tanks. Uh, I'm still going to use it. I'm just going to simply, instead of using a clamp, I'm going to zip tie it. It will be the same effect as clamping this rubber or silicone hose onto it. Um, if you have fish tank tubing laying around, like such, you could try that. Whether or not your attachment that you own or that you purchase to modify to connect the other end of the hose fits on it is questionable. You may have to adapt it in some way. Okay, so now we're just going to take the glue gun. I'm going to add a little bit of glue covering the rubber, the plastic, and that little metal hinge, helping this stay in place. I'll do a little bit on both sides. Or, heck, you could do the whole entire thing if you wanted to, technically. They only had a very little bit on there, but probably due to saving money. So now we've glued that, essentially replaced that glue that was missing that we took off here with a little bit of glue. And we're going to put this back together and give it a test run. Now if you already own a Tetra pump and you noticed it not working, you could actually pull your valve out, check the size and diameter of the O-rings being used. You may actually be able to find O-rings at your local hardware store to replace them. And all you have to do is simply replace your O-rings. And I recommend putting a little grease on there because that's why the O-ring failed to begin with. It dried out and cracked. And put the valve back in the same exact way that you had it previously if you're using it for your fish tank. And it's just a failed Tetra pump at this point. The, the electronics behind it, the basics behind it, very simple. Shouldn't fail in any way. But you can easily repair your Tetra pump if it stopped working or maybe it's not putting out as much air as it used to by replacing those O-rings and giving it a better seal on the valve. So we've replaced, we turned the valve around, put it all back together again for testing reasons. I'm going to put my current SMG hose on here, but since it's slightly larger in diameter, I'm using a bright yellow O-ring so it's obvious on the video. And I'm going to clamp it with the zip tie. And let's go ahead and grab some pieces and test this out. So over here I have some of my uh, SMD chips. And 
let's see here. We got some in there, some in there. Kind of look at the average size of the chip so I can get an idea of what uh what size suction cup I should use on the tool during the test. And I also want to get some really heavy weighted big chips. There we go, that's probably the heaviest one right there. These are a little smaller. Let's just go ahead and open them all up, see what I have in here. There's a Broadcom chip. Okay, so we have we have quite a quite a few selections here to choose from. I'm gonna go with the medium. Uh, I have three different size, as most people that have uh, an SMD pen or or suction, you, you'll have three different sized little suction cups. A very small, which is used for your resistors, uh, like your 1206 size and down, um, medium and a larger one for the bigger chips. So let's go ahead and plug the pump in. And I do love how quiet these pumps are. And it seems like we have suction. So let's go ahead and test this here real quick. Okay. That seems to work. Let's let go of the vacuum. There we go. Let's try uh, something slightly bigger. A little bit more weight to it. And that seems to work too. Great. All right, let's go ahead and get a closer look at this while I'm doing this here. So you can see, I was able to pick up this Broadcom chip here. I was able to pick up this IC chip here without an issue. Let's go ahead and close the chips up here. And we'll go ahead and, of course, I expect no issue with my resistors, LEDs, or anything. We'll open up a few different sizes here. We got a fuse, we got some LEDs. Uh, Resistors, 1206 capacitors, and I believe I have some smaller. Let me see, one. Do, do, do. I haven't sorted out my new inventory yet. So there we go. We have some smaller ones up there. And the pump is so small, you could just simply move the side, which is really nice to do as well. Being able to move the chip, easy, the pump to a new, new position easily enough. So we'll put the small suction cup back on here. And let's see how it handles the smaller parts. So there's a resistor. Again, no issue picking that up. There's a fuse. No issue there. Here's some dual LEDs. No issue there except for the tremor in my hand. Close these. Move over to here. We have some 1206 capacitors. Here we go. And we have uh, slightly smaller ones. Let me see. Let's see if I can turn this hose. There we go. That's better. Let's see if we can grab one of the smaller ones in here. Now that was really easy actually. You grabbed the sideways too. In fact, it almost held onto it without me keeping the vacuum on it. Oh wow, yeah. This is a really quiet pump. Uh, this is gonna work fine. I'm not gonna hear anybody complaining. You know, you're making too much noise. What is that rumble? Is that vibration? So, great, real easy, quiet, and I definitely like it. So at this point, you've made yourself a little SMD vacuum pickup. And you can find pens like this actually on Amazon for fairly cheap. And I've seen them where they've actually taken the cap off and just kind of popped the cap off. You could do the same and maybe a little fitting in here to adapt to the size of the rubber or silicon hose you're using. 
just make sure it's airtight and the pens on on Amazon that I've seen don't have a little hole in it like this to put your finger over to use to you know create the vacuum and then release you may be able to work something out there I'm not sure um, but there are other instructables out there as well and other videos showing how to adapt the pen I just took the current pen that I use from my AUSMD 738H rework state uh, and using this but instead of turning on the AU and uh, well, well, while I'm prepping the boards, I'll have to turn on the AU to actually solder everything, but I can stage the boards with the soldering paste and the chips using this and this pump real quietly. And then I can turn it on to actually, you know, preheat the board, melt the components in place and what have you. Um, oh yeah, you know, I, I did have one other piece that was a larger piece I forgot. I was going to see how that worked and, oh, well, I'm on. I'm on a static safe mat, so this is a Samsung memory chip. This is probably the, the largest chip I have currently. Let's go ahead and see if it has the power to pick that up. And it does, without a problem. It picked that up really easily. Great. Okay, so that's the probably one of the biggest bigger chips I usually deal with. So if it can pick that up, I'm okay. Go ahead and put that back in, in this protection bag. This is still a good chip. I have plans for this later. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped. And uh, enjoy your hobby, enjoy your soldering, and keep on tinkering.